Welcome to our Bible study tonight, and thank you so much for joining us. I want us to think about tonight the theme or the idea of being changed forever. And there's a couple of passages of Scripture I want us to look at uh, as well. So go ahead and have your Bible out, uh, your electronic device. Go ahead and be prepared to turn to Colossians chapter 3 and also Romans chapter 6. Before we do that, I want to tell you a story uh, that goes along with this idea of changed forever. The date was November the 27th, 2003. Greta was pregnant with our youngest son, Jordan, who is now 16. So uh, we're approaching uh, 16, 17 years ago. And this was Thanksgiving. We were living uh, outside of Memphis in Collierville, Tennessee. And we were headed down to Carrollton, Georgia, uh, Atlanta area to be with my brother and his family, my parents and my sister. And we were on the other side of Birmingham. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember thinking as we're driving down the road, <clears throat> man, the traffic is crazy. This is, on <clears throat> this is on the Wednesday evening before Thanksgiving Day. And so <clears throat> we were trying to get uh, over to Georgia, and we had gotten on the other side of Birmingham. We topped a hill, and down at the bottom of the hill, traffic was stopping. And so we stopped. And I remember everything happening so fast. I was wanting to get over in the, in the other lane, but there was so much traffic, I was afraid to jump over there. And before I knew it, I looked up in my rearview mirror and I saw lights coming. And we were stopped dead still. There was nothing we could do. They were doing construction and so the guardrail was uh, almost seems as close as this TV monitor is to me, uh, to the van. And this guy in a small truck pulling a big trailer rammed into the back of us. You can see here from this picture how the front end of his truck went into our car. Here our luggage is uh, in the back of our van, so it crushed some of that. Uh, you can also see here, uh, well, I thought you could. Uh, we had already taken it out uh, in this picture, but my boys were right here. My older two boys were right here on the back seat uh, of this van. Uh, this is another picture, and of course you see some of our luggage in there. The glass is all busted out, but you can see how dented in from the bumper this is, uh, where this guy hit us. Our seats broke. This is the seat that Greta was sitting in, and this is the driver's seat. Uh, of course, we had one seat out in the middle, and the other two boys were sitting on the back. Uh, you can see here, this is again the seat, the passenger seat that Greta was in, and the driver's seat, the airbag has been deployed. Uh, I remember after it happened, uh, of course, if you look at the picture from the front, you're like, oh, that's not too bad. But that's why I wanted to show you the back end to show you, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty bad. And I remember thinking when, right after it happened, I was like, okay, this may be a chain reaction. Greta jumped out of the van, and I'm sitting there in the middle of the van about to un uh, do the seat belts for my boys and I'm sitting there looking and trying to look through the back and make sure that no more uh, chain reaction is going to happen and so we get we unbuckle them and get them out and proceed calling and trying to take care of uh, uh, getting 911 called and things like that and, and there's so many uh, emotions and memories that go through my mind when I think about this date and I think about this accident. Uh, I remember I had injured my ankle because I had my foot on the, on the brake. Uh, Nolan had a, um, uh, a burn from the seat belt on his leg. Uh, fortunately, Brady and uh, Greta, they uh, checked out fine, had no bruises, no, no injuries. Uh, she was pregnant with Jordan and everything was uh, worked out with Jordan and he, everything was good. Uh, we lacked like a month paying this van off. Uh, it was in bad shape. We really needed a new one, didn't want to get it this way. But my point in telling this story is that this event in my life and the life of my family, this event 
changed some things for me. It changed life. It changed uh, the way I look at traveling. I, I cannot go by that spot. Now, I don't remember the exact spot anymore, but I remember the stretch of highway that it was on. And every time I go uh, over to Georgia, I remember that incident. Uh, but this incident changed the way I drive. It changed how I view interstate travel or travel in general. Uh, so much so that when there is a lot of traffic on the interstate, oh man, my stomach is in knots because that's the way it was that night. A lot of people joke with me about, about the way I drive and that I drive too slow. Well, this is why. Because I want to be able to react before something else happens. I understand there's a lot of things I can't control and I may not be able to uh, avoid something like this again, but I know from that night I was in a hurry. There was a lot of traffic. I was like, let's get through this traffic. All of a sudden somebody stopped. I didn't have a way to go. So therefore, I don't want to be in that situation again if I can help it. So this event changed the way I drive, especially on trips because I don't ever want to be back there again. Well, that's a negative event that changed something in my life. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Colossians chapter 3. Uh, Wednesday night, the young people met uh, over here on the Love and, Love, Play, Love and Learn playground, and John Allen, uh, he presented a devotional from Colossians chapter 3, and I got to thinking about that and thinking about this idea that I wanted to share with you for tonight about change. And I want to just read, I want us to read together and, and talk about a few things here. And I also want us to go over to Romans chapter 6 and we'll talk about some things there as it relates to the change in our life. Colossians chapter 3, notice in verse 1. Paul says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the, uh, according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And so Paul comes along to these Christians and he's writing to these Christians and he says, if you're raised with Christ, when you gave your life to Him and you were buried with Him in baptism to rise in newness of life, declaring your commitment to Jesus Christ, if you were raised with Him, like Christ was raised out of the grave, you were raised out of the water grave of baptism. He says then, set. Uh, I, I wanted to bring a bag of quickcrete in here. Or uh, we have some uh, buckets with concrete quickcrete in it and poles that we've used, posts that we've used for Vacation Bible School. And I wanted you to get that image because that's the image when Paul says set. That concrete hardens and that pole is set in that concrete. And Paul says, set your mind, focus your mind on things that are above. Why? Because now you're in Christ, not on things on the earth. Now let me ask you this. Is that a challenge? Well, you may be sitting there saying, absolutely it is. And you know what I say? Absolutely you're right. It is a challenge. Why is that? Because we have to be aware that we read the Scripture, we fill our minds with the things of Scripture. Guess what? Satan's going to be right there saying, oh, now, like he did Adam and Eve. Uh, now, God didn't really mean that when he said that. 
And you see, the reality is he did mean it. And he said, focus on things above, not on things on the earth. Satan is going to do everything he can to cause us to think about things on the earth. I do it every day. It's a struggle. It's a battle. And that's why I wanted us to think about this tonight because uh, one of the points that were brought out in, in the lesson last Wednesday night with the young people is that you think about water. Uh, the question was asked, why is it so hard to live the Christian life? And the point was made, think about water. Water will travel the path of least, re, least resistance. And Jesus said, listen, that's the way that everybody in the world travels. The path of least resistance. Now, I'm not talking about uh, working to lose weight. I'm not talking about working to uh, be the best athlete you can be or to make the most money you can make, to be the best business person you can be, to be the best student you can be, to be the best worker you can be. I'm not talking about those things. You know, we, have, we see a lot of people working hard at those things and they are successful as a result. But I'm saying in general, spiritually think, speaking, the majority travels the path of least resistance, like water. And so Jesus comes along, Paul comes along through inspiration of the Holy Spirit and says, listen, I want you to travel different from the path of least resistance. And I want you to battle every day, every moment of the day, those thoughts that Satan wants us to focus on things on the earth. Now that doesn't mean we don't take care of our family, we don't work hard, we don't provide, because the Bible speaks about that as well. But as a whole, our goal is not how much money I'm going to have when I retire, how much money I can make. Uh, that's not the most important thing. Now, yes, we need money, and yes, we need to set goals to do the best we can do and, and make all we can make to support our family and give to the church and give to the Lord and help and support and all those kind of things. But overall, our ultimate goal, our ultimate focus is I've been raised with Christ. Therefore, I want to live that way. Therefore, I will conduct my business that way. I will be a student that way. I will be an athlete that way. When I go to work, I go to work as a raised believer from the watery graves of baptism because I've given my life to Jesus Christ. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Put to death these members of the flesh. That's not to say we're not going to struggle with that. If you look at that list, I guarantee there's something in there that you struggle with. And the devil knows that. And so Paul says, put those to death. Not once, not once at baptism, at the point where I gave my life to Jesus, not one time, but every day I seek to put those things to death. Because I'm raised a new man. He says, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. And so Paul said, you're changed. Now I want you to go uh, with, me, with me briefly to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Paul again to the church at Rome says something very similar. So let's look at some of the things that he says here. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Your version may say, God forbid. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of, Father, of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life? For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that your old man was crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Him." For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now hold on right there for a minute. Someone might bring up the idea of, of grace. Now, yeah, Paul has been talking about grace. We're justified by faith through grace. 
and through our salvation in Jesus Christ. But the problem that's going on here is, Paul, is people are saying, well, man, if it's about grace, well, let's just, let's just sin so we can get more grace. And Paul says, no, 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 that's not it because you've been changed. You've been changed. You're different. And you're different because of grace. And therefore, because of grace, you live differently. Wow. You see, it's when we realize the gift of the grace of God. You see, Paul tried to live by the law, by the strictest letter of the law. And he was on his way. He, he, he despised Christians because he thought they were wrong. Because he said, you do it by the letter, letter of the law. Well, on the road to Damascus, Paul experienced the grace of Jesus Christ. That's why later he says, listen, I'm the chief of sinners. And God's forgiven me through His grace and His mercy and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I know it's not about me. I'm not good enough. And so I battle every day because it's sin living in me. It's, it's Satan stirring up the flesh. It's Satan putting those things in my life, life saying, focus here, focus here, focus on this, focus on that. Oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. You worry about this, you worry about that. And Paul says, no. Yeah, these things are real. But I lay all this at the foot of the cross, at the throne of Almighty God. Why? Why? Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. Sin lusts after us. And Paul says, don't obey it. Because you died. You died with Jesus Christ. Therefore, don't let sin reign in your body that you should obey its lust and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and from your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Paul said, don't forget the grace of God that sent Jesus to the cross to die for you. And when you gave your life to Him, you died also. Now that doesn't mean that we're not going to be tempted. Paul in Corinthians talks about with all temptations, God provides a way out. But he says, don't let sin reign in your body. Isn't it sad? I've done it. But isn't it sad when we as Christians, when you really think about that, when we as Christians, we come together as the body of Christ and we look nice and we look Christian and then we go out into the world through the week and you couldn't pick us out from anyone else. It's not about that we look different but about our character because of the grace of God through Jesus Christ, His Son. Is it different? And you see, Paul says, when you give your life to Jesus, there's some things that change. Now listen, it's not, it's not that all of a sudden you are perfect and you do everything right. No, no, that's not what he's saying. That's the grace of God. We get the grace of God through our journey, through, through Jesus Christ, through because we try every day to live for Him and not let sin reign in our bodies. Paul would say it this way. What's changed in your life? Can people see change in your life? Can people tell today change in your life, even though maybe it's 20 years ago you became a Christian, 30, 40, 50 years ago, maybe five years ago. 
Can people still see change happening in your life? You see, that's the journey through grace. Not, hey, let's go out here and do, just let's just sin so we can receive more grace. No, he says, listen, you, you keep trying. It's a battle. You keep, you keep going on that journey. You keep focusing on Jesus, the Hebrew writer would say. But Paul would say in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, he also mentioned about this in Romans uh, or Colossians, the old man and the new man. But in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, Paul fighting that idea of keeping the letter of the law again, he says, listen, I, the law has, has a purpose. The law has shown us that we're sinners and that we need a Savior. But he says, I don't longer live by the law, the Mosaic law. He says, because I've been crucified with Christ, now I live by the law of Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it's Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. You know, today, I can look at my life and I know that I'm different today than, than I was back when I was in the eighth grade and I decided to give my life to the Lord and I was buried with Him in baptism. That's when I began my journey. But you know, it would be sad if I sat here today and said, you know, I'm just like I was back then. And the reality is I'm not. And it's not because I'm perfect. It's because I choose to battle every day. I still mess up. I still make mistakes. I fail because I'm human. But I keep seeking to the best of my ability to focus on Jesus. To say, is an old cliche, Dustin's been talking about it recently with the young people, what would Jesus do? It's an old cliche. But in reality, when I see world events going on, my thought says, how does God, through His Word, tell us to do that? How did Jesus treat people? How did Jesus act as a carpenter's son? How did Jesus act when He was 12 years old? How did Jesus tell His disciples to tell others how to act? Well, Paul says, when I gave my life to the Lord, I changed. But Paul also said, in the book of Philippians, in whatever state I'm in, I have learned to be content. So my challenge for us tonight is, what kind of changes have people seen in my life because of Jesus? Can my spouse say they are more of a Christian today than they were 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago? Can my children say, I've watched my dad, I've watched my mom grow in the Lord. Young people, can your parents say, boy, I've seen my kids grow because they fight to give their life to the Lord every day. Can our bosses say, boy, their work has improved, their honesty, their ethics has improved since the day they started here. Young people, can they say that at school? Teachers, can, they, can other people say that about you? Wherever you go, can people say, now I want to be like that. Not because we're just good people, but because we gave our life to the Lord and we've been changed. I want to encourage you tonight to sit down with your family. Read through Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11 again. Pick out the things that Paul says that we change in our lives. Look at Romans chapter 6. Pick out the things again that Paul says should change in our life. Uh, there are other passages of Scripture that, we, that you could go to. Um, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus mentioned some things. The book of 1 Corinthians, Paul says... Uh, listen, you guys are divided, and that shouldn't be. You, you are the church. You are God's people. You have been changed. And so I challenge you, Paul would say, I challenge you, live like Christ. How could Paul say that? 
because Paul had changed. And it was evident in his life. I've been crucified with Christ. And the life I live in the flesh, I no longer live, but it's Christ that lives in me. Thank you so much for joining our Bible study tonight. I want to encourage you to keep watching. Join us uh, on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We're meeting back together again. Uh, also, on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., our video will be up on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. And then on Wednesday nights, we have been, uh, we're doing our summer series, but we have videos uh, that, uh, from other speakers, and we're talking about the transformation that, uh, of how God transformed characters in Scripture and how we can apply that to our lives. We've had two great ones already. I want to encourage you to uh, tune in this week, uh, so we'll have another one. And each and every week uh, on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. If we can help you in any way, pray with you or assist you in any way, give us a call. Check us out on our uh, website, savannachurchofchrist.com. Thank you so much for joining us.